Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining. If you've been here before and you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new and you enjoy any of the content, please consider subscribing because this massively helps to grow the channel. So this week's video is slightly different in as much as although we're doing trim room updates, we're also doing a bit on GH, KH and PH and buffering and, and certain additives and stuff that go within the tank. Hope you find it useful. These are my own opinions or my own thoughts or what I think I know. So as with everything, I'd highly recommend you do your research and sort of look into things yourself. But this is what I've learned along the way. I've been in the aquarium hobby in excess of 30 years. I'm relatively new to shrimp keeping, a couple of years at most. And out of the back of that and my passion for that, we've obviously built the business and grow, uh, you know, I want to grow the hobby in the UK and ended up building a shrimp room with 25, 30 tanks. So with all that being said, let's get straight to the video. Sure update. So the tangerine tigers have moved. Move these in quite quickly. There is no ammonia, no nitrite, and we've done water changes. I'd have preferred, there is a bit of green wall, but I'd have preferred this to go on a little bit longer. I've noticed, and if anyone can tell me why, I've noticed that for the last two days, a lot of the shrimp in here are going crazy. They're zooming almost as though there's a female malt, but they've been doing it for a couple of days. So if anyone can tell me why, water parameters are fine. Tested everything in there. PH, GH, KH, TDS, everything's fine in there. They do look like males. So maybe a couple of females have malted, not sure. But they seem to have been doing this for, this is probably the third day now. So going on to the short room update then, is I've tools and stuff everywhere here. I still haven't emptied this out, but there are some snails in there that I need to move out. So if I just take you to the shelf below, I just wanted to show you that all of the floats are in. Lighten isn't in there yet, but I'll fit that once I move the shelf above it. I need to change that. And then the idea is that the blue pipe here will go and that'll be the second line and then we'll come up to the third line. The feed still needs to get added. So we have got a pipe there that goes across, but at the moment I've not got it connected anywhere. So what I'll probably do is connect it this side over here somewhere and then we'll tidy all the cables up and put some backs on and stuff like that. So that's a little bit of a room update to start the week with. So I did say this video, this week's video will be slightly different. And what I want to do is talk about KH, GH and water parameters. So two types of shrimp in the hobby that most people keep are Neocaridina and Caridina. They both have particular water parameters to keep them at their optimum. My personal opinion is that if you keep caridina you need reverse osmosis water even if you've got really soft tap water you don't know what's in that tap water so personally and this is my own opinion although you can probably keep caridina on certain tap waters in the uk they won't prosper you're not giving them the best environment that they can live in so what is gh and what is kh so gh is general hardness and KH is carbonate hardness. <clears throat> General hardness is the hardness of the water. Carbonate hardness plays a role in buffering the pH of the water. And we know that caridina like specific pHs and neocaridina are quite variable. Because caridina don't like any carbonate hardness, what we need is we need a way of buffering that pH and taking the place of what carbonate hardness would normally do. So carbonate hardness is known to hold a pH and restrict pH rings. If you've got no way of buffering that water, you're going to get wild pH rings, low, high, and that's not going to be good for the shrimp. So the first thing, first product, I suppose, that I want to discuss is salty shrimp. So salty shrimp, GH, KH, that will give you one degree carbon hardness to 0. Point, sorry, one degree general hardness to 0. 0.5 carbon hardness based on how you dose that. So if you if you dose that to get six GH, you will get three KH out of that. 
If you use reverse osmosis for Neo Caravina, which, which again, why wouldn't you, you know? Tap water is okay if you know what that tap water consists of. So what that does, you can use an inert substrate, you can use gravels and stand, sands and stuff like that that won't affect the water parameters and you're still buffering because the KH within that will buffer that, that water, okay? So that's salty shrimp. If you have no KH, so this is a product from Qualdrop. We sell all of these, by the way. This is a product from Qualdrop called GH Plus LC. So that's low conductivity. It will give you a low TDS, but that's a, that's a different story. That adds GH to your reverse osmosis water. So you're adding general hardness. It's quite an easy dose, that one. They come in various sizes. There are particular ones that are designed. So there's a GH plus one, which is designed for tiger species. So again, all you're adding is a GH here. Qualdrop do do a KH builder. I personally don't stock it because I stock salty shrimp uh, and there's no need to sort of stock both, but uh, I do stock the tiger variant. So what we're saying is because we don't have the ability to buffer if we're only adding GH back, general hardness, what we then require is we require a soil that will buffer the pH. So a soil that will maintain, uh, sorry, a pH, a soil that will buffer the water and maintain a specific pH. There are various soils on the market. They all do slightly different things. You may have seen my recent videos where I've mentioned Tropica and what pH I'm getting from Tropica. But I'll show you a couple of examples. So the first example is Aquasolum. It's a black humate. It's made by Seachem or otherwise known as Aquavitro. They've got a, a specific shrimp section. And this particular soil is very black and it will buffer the pH to around 5.5. What it doesn't do is this one doesn't leach ammonia. So when you're cycling a tank, you'll either need to add an ammonia source or cycle it some other way. Pre-cycled filter, you know, however you're going to do that, feed it with fish food or feed it with food. So you will need a way of, 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 of adding an ammonia source to feed and grow that bacteria. I've got a load of bacteria here. We'll come back to those later. This soil is called Terra Activa, it's by Blau. It gives a higher pH, so this gives you around a pH 6.5. So you can see here that it gives you a pH of 6.5 and it's saying the GH equals 2. So this gives a GH, I believe, but, but again, I'd mix my water into this that would give me the specific general hardness that I'm aiming for anyway zero carbon hardness or zero to one this soil does leach ammonia so when i'm cycling the tank it's already got an ammonia source so this will will process different soils do different things ada amazonia leaches lots of ammonia the cycle length on an ada amazonia tank is very long other other soils are shorter and different soils leach and different soils don't leach. And the, what I'm planning to do is try and get a table together of all the soils or most of the soils on the market, what they leach, how much they leach, etc. So we'll try and get that done for a future video. When we come to cycling then, we want to talk about adding a bacterial source. So there are loads and loads of, of bacterial products on the market. Um, they're all much of a muchness, in my opinion. They've got slight variations and stuff. So an example is Qualdrop do Biobacter, PS Bacter, Bionitro and Shrimp Bacter. So there's four products there that theoretically you could cycle a tank with. You're adding a bacterial source that's going to colonise that tank and give you what you require from eating up the ammonia etc etc the shrimp back is a new one it's it smells beautiful it smells like a sweet shop shrimp back is a new one i've used it the first time in the tropica um, soil tank and the blau tank that we've done and they seem to be working fine ps back a photosensitive one 
iron nitro although you can use it to start a tank you can add it as, as you can the ps back to so when you do your water changes you should be adding topping back up with bacteria anyway and, and adding new bacteria and biobacter does sort of similar but there's slight variations um there is a chart <coughs> excuse me <coughs> there is a chart uh, and some descriptors of what each one do does and what their variations are if we take those away a second then we've then got a couple from SL Aqua so Milli One is a bacterial powder and magic powder is bacteria and enzymes and stuff like that and again two products you could cycle a tank with each individually or together and you can use them for topping up bacteria so they are much of a muchness um, there are slight variations i.e the bacterial powder is just a bacterial powder the magic powder has other things added so talking about cycling the tank then there are a couple of ways that you can cycle a tank you can put your soil on the base as a as a, as a base layer um, with a specific thickness you know whatever you want that thickness and what that will do is that will leach ammonia into the water with its ammonia one, but it will also leach nutrients and it will buffer the water. In order to do that, you end up having to have quite a thick layer or thickish layer of soil on, 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 on the bottom of the tank. And what that will do is over time, all the bits of waste and dead plants and rotting material and fish poop and shrimp poop and you know whatever you've got in the tank will gradually work its way down into that layer of soil and i use it so some of my tanks are like that and what will happen over time that waste will build up and that gives you the risk then of toxicity so that stuff breaking down can release toxic gases into the aquarium and potentially cause problems and this is where another method of of doing this comes into play so so you'll have all seen these in some of my tanks this is our tall version so this is what's called a UGF box or an Asian style method and the idea of this is that you put your underground filter in the bottom of this I'm not going to push this down because this box is broken but you put your underground filter in the bottom of this and then you fill that with substrate or you can fill it with filter media and soils and the idea of the UGF box is because you're actually passing water through the soil and there's a flow of water through the soil you're almost supercharging that that soil so you're getting the best out of that soil there are benefits you know you can pre-cycle these in buckets with air stones and add your bacteria before you put them in the tank you can do that if you're swapping one out when your soil is spent. So again, different soils have different longevities. Some of them last six months, some of them last 12 months, some of them will last two years. You'll, you'll know, you'll get an indication based on how your shrimp react and what your pH is if you're regularly testing the pH. So if your pH starts to rise or fluctuate, your soil's probably spent. But the benefit of the UGF box is because your soil is all concentrated in that UGF box, you only need a very, very thin layer on the base of the tank. And that's it for two reasons. One, for something for the shrimp to pick through and two, for aesthetics. And because there's no, you, you know, you're almost in one grain thickness, your shrimp will turn that over and any waste that builds up, you can qu quickly siphon that out and put a new bit of soil in if it's a non you know, a non-ammonia leaching soil. So I quite like the UGF boxes. I don't use them in my bigger tanks. I use, uh, sorry, in my smaller tanks, I tend to use a bit of a thicker layer and I'll use double sponges or, or portable matten filters, matten towers. So that was sort of a bit of a look over, over a product. When I cycle a UGF, what I do is I put the plate in the bottom or put a layer of soil in and then what I do is I sprinkle some bacteria and then put another layer in and sprinkle some bacteria and put another layer in and sprinkle some bacteria so I'm actually building the bacteria through the soil layers which I find really really beneficial I wasn't going to cover any more products in this video but I really enjoyed doing that last section 
So we've got a couple of products here that are additions to a shrimp tank and I just want to sort of go over what they are and what they do. So the first one, if I can pronounce it correctly, is Mirana Kuton and it's a, a, a natural mineral found in Japan, a deep sea mineral. And what it does, it provides the microorganisms living in your aquarium and your filter and in the substrate with the minerals they need. Um, what it also do is helps to sort of clean the tank and you can get this in either rock or powder form. So if you have a look at the rock then, this one's by SL Aqua. They come in sort of big rocks. You can break them down. Personally, I just break these up and throw one in or a piece of one in an aquarium. I also do this in two sizes from Quad Up. This is the bigger size. So um, this is a powdered form. So you can sprinkle that in and it gives the inhabitants minerals and stuff that they require. And then there's, so that's a Quad Up one. There's also an SL Aqua one there. So those three products are Mirana Kuten. Um, two powders, one as a stone. Personally, I like the stones, uh, but I do use all three of them, you know, based on what I'm doing at the time. If we move those back then, what we'll now look at is, and I never pronounce this correctly. So these are products, um, they're a clay-based product, so they're called Montmorillonite. And again, got this in a powder form or in a stone form. So stone forms from SL Aqua and the powdered form is from Quad Drop. And what these do is, again, they add, they add minerals, but the Montmorillon-like Mar clay, what that will also do is it will, it will give and slowly release nutrients or, or minerals, should I say, into the water that are beneficial for the shrimp. They help to increase the colour, the digestive system of the shrimp and help them to sort of absorb the nutrients that they need. What Montmorillonis will do is it will also remove odours. So if you're using this in a stone form, it actually soaks up odours and bad odours and stuff. So if you are getting sort of a bit of a smell, dropping a rock into your filter or into the tank itself will absorb those smells. So I'm not fully versed on these uh, i do use them uh, that's sort of my understanding of them and how i use them but feel free to go and sort of read up on them and research them uh, good addition to the aquarium in my opinion and i do have this in most of my tanks i haven't i don't put it in the new ones uh, just because they're cycling but once i've got an established tank i will add a piece of rock to each of the tanks update on the tiger tank then they seem to have stopped zooming which is good. There must have been a series of molts, like one after the other. One may have triggered the other, I'm not sure, but they seem to have calmed down. There are a lot of males in here, if that's the case, so I need to try and separate out some males. I'll probably drop them into the mix tank. One thing that I did want to quickly talk about then, while we're on the subject of that, is this product here. So I haven't got this to sell yet. It is one that I'm thinking of selling, so let's just move that around. It's called Fly, it's from Shrimps Forever, and it stimulates, sorry for the shaking, it stimulates, let's get that back, it stimulates the hormones that are released, the pheromones, so it will allegedly stimulate breeding, but I've got my doubts. What I thought it'd be really useful for is if it does stimulate the, the pheromones, it'd be a really easy way of catching your males. So if you've got too many males in the tank and your male to female ratio isn't what you want it to be, using this may give you the ability to do that. So I'm going to put that to the test. If I'm happy with it, I'll stock it and I'll let you guys know. Woohoo! Man's cooking on gas, as the kids would say. So um, as most of you know, my health's not brilliant and I've found that you have to sort of make hay while the sun shines. So... I'm not having a bad day today, got up a bit rough, had a rough night, but I've been pretty good ever since and the meds seem to be helping. So you may have noticed then that on this shelf there's a tank missing and the reason that tank's missing is because what we've done is we've got four tanks on this lower shelf and I'm using the gimbal so we'll see if we can uh, rotate properly and then I've also got three of the 45s and we've also got our little 25 on the end there. So that's the Tropical Soil one that was on the end. I'm just using that, um, it's called a PLED light. 
they're ultra bright very white and blue or the white and blue leds in there and for those of you that watch shrimp mania he used one recently and he had to put some electrical tape around it just to cut the light down because they are super super bright but for me it's temporary that they're, they're, they're algae algae growers you know so we've got i showed earlier in the video we've got all the flow valves fitted at the bottom i've now connected up the little hook point and obviously that spins and we've also got all of the taps in ready for when i can find the float valve so i did buy 20 of them god knows where they are but um as always updates for rooms i'm hoping that by the time this video gets out that we'll have all of this rack done really i think what i'm going to do so i've got two more of those 45s left but i mentioned this earlier i think what i'm going to do if we just turn that round is at the bottom here we have another 45 i might repair that and put that up on this top shelf along with those two 25s so we'll move that onto this top shelf that's absolutely full of tools at the moment and i've still got to do the the, the float valves on here and then ultimately because i've got two of those 45 left i think i'm just going to put one on that top shelf sideways it won't accept them because this is 455 mil and those tanks are 500 mil long so i'm just going to put one on there sideways i think and what that will do is if i move that sort of slightly to the left it will free up that corner a little bit so i can see those top tanks with the ada amazonia in a little bit so we're just going to keep going and see how far we get before i'm absolutely dead and i'll probably have a couple of days now where i can't move but it is what it is the room might be a bit noisy but as you can see we're in the process of topping up or filling these tanks on the bottom shelf so the shelf underneath will be storage as i've mentioned before it's currently got some soils and stuff but they'll get moved the middle shelf's done as well i haven't finished the top shelf yet but the permanent lighting is on there so all of these are lit up now and the whole rack only uses 60 watts of light so what we've used is we've used if you can see that lamp there we've used what two of those per shelf and and that seems to be giving enough illumination so i have ordered an 85 litre bin and the 85 litre bin will, will fill up i'll fill up with my mix when i do my changes and stuff and i'm gonna probably create a a wheel dolly underneath that so with big casters i can move that around but the pump now is actually so if i can follow the line of that is actually filling up through through the rack itself and if we look at the back all of these have got taps in so that's what's filling at the moment okay and they're all strapped strapped in and on the, and on float valves so working really well i was a bit paranoid about them leaking but they're not leaking at all so that's sort of a room update this is saturday i may do a bit of video with this completed and i do have one tank on there already already full so that was moved over uh, we'll see how far we can get anyway but um, i'm not too bad today the galaxies are munching on a nice bit of kabardi ebi pellet so they go a bit wild for the ebi pellets uh, so same with ebi dharma mixed of cane there's fancy tigers are on it the blue bolt one dropped into the moss so they're all in there trying to get that out i might get the forceps in there and, and grab those out and then i've got i think i put two pieces in here by by mistake so the better fancy tigers are on that the pintos are on that i believe the prl have eaten theirs or well, they're on it it's under there so they don't seem to be as interested as the others but they they are on it they are feeding i'm planning on moving those and resetting that tank the tangerine tigers have moved i did lose one 
and then my experiment tank are on an airby pellet in there as well and everything else seems to be doing to doing fine so orange neos sorry let's see if I can get the reflection out of the way orange neos on that as well so plenty of algae that probably needs a bit of a clean out in these top tanks I haven't tested these yet but I may move my PRL into one of those I haven't decided yet so just a little bit of a room update I'll, I'll hopefully update you guys before I get the video out and see where we go I did manage to get a bit of an update so it's Sunday morning we were busy yesterday got the nipper helping me so we managed to get he was just carrying buckets until I get my big bucket in. So we managed to get the bottom rack, fin bottom shelf on the big rack finished. And we've literally just finished the middle shelf. Still got to do the top shelf. Bit of a mess up there. Haven't decided what I want to do. At the moment, I've got a 45 litre low boy on there. And I'm tempted to move these two over. But I think long term, I'm going to order three custom tanks for that. Probably a little bit shorter in the height. And we'll sort of go from there but we've got all these cycling so the bottom the bottom ones are all on master soil so I used a, a bag of master soil that I had from Jacob at Happy Shrimp House that um, got damaged in the post I know you've heard me speak about that before or damaged in um, by customs and then the middle shelf all by the small end tank are all aquasolum so aquasolum isn't a leaching soil so the bottom ones will leach apart from the middle one that's on sl aqua the um the bottom ones will leach so the, all the masters or ones but the aquasolum ones won't so i'm just going to give them time um not sure if i'm going to add an ammonia source i think i'm just going to sort of go through the cycle the bacteria is there you sort of get an idea for when those are ready i had to do a bit on the one that's really cloudy so these have all got UGF boxes in haven't put any double sponges on yet I may do at a later point or put a sponge filter in as well the bottom ones are all on mattened so if I can show you that one there that's blue in the corner and I'm just going to sort of try and see how we go with those but uh, what I was trying to say was this tank here my UGF box I tried to adjust the tube length to get the outlet at the top and I pulled it straight out of the box so all the soil fell down the hole and I had to strip it down and redo that. But uh, putting that back in was okay. The tank did go a bit cloudy but it will settle. And the Tropica soil one that's at the end, I've just put some hornwort in that. Um, pH is still 6. I'm pretty happy with that to be honest and it's cycled. So I may drop a couple of shrimp in there just to see how they do and see where that goes. But... Um, that's pretty much it for this week so we have got all the all the tanks in I've got some snails breeding over here some pink ram's horns and everything else is doing fine I'll put a temporary light on to the PRL tank um, so it's just cabling down here at the moment and I'm about to do sort of top up some and, and water changes but um, I've moved that UGF box out of the the reflection's really bad in here. I've moved that UGF box out of this ADI Amazonia tank and uh, it does need topping up with water but uh, massive amounts of algae and these are our cycles or, or they're coming to the end of cycle so I'll probably clean a load of the algae out and before I put any shrimp in there and if I'm honest I'm really tempted to start moving some of my shrimp around so um, PRL I think I want to recycle, reset that tank. So I'm probably going to move those. I think actually I'm going to wait with the PRL and I'm going to move them over onto an Aquasolum, but I may move them onto an ADA. Uh, likewise, the Pintos. So it's a good opportunity to do a bit of a selection process in there, bring them, bring some of the weaker ones out into the mixed tank. And they, they bred really well. They need a bigger tank, if I'm honest. And then likewise at the bottom, that smaller tank there, that's got sort of low low grade fancy tigers in, but they do need to go somewhere. So I'm tempted to put those up here and just leave them be and let them sort of crack on and do their stuff. So a few changes. I do want to reset the blue bulk tank. 
but I'm a bit reluctant to because they've started breeding like mad. Incidentally, I was speaking to, um, or I was watching something from Benny Tay on Shrimp Sanctuary. I'll tag his YouTube channel in the comments. And he was chatting to a guy in North America. And the guy in North America, or it might have been somewhere else actually, but they were talking about sort of perfumes and, you, you know, um, household chemicals. And I've never really had great success with my blue bolts, but since we've moved them into this shrimp room and there's no sort of chemicals, i.e. not necessarily air fresheners, maybe plug-in air fresheners, but uh, mopping floors and sort of disinfectants and stuff like that and the fumes of those in the air, these seem to be doing a lot better. So I'm tempted to sort of let that run and see how that goes. But uh, life of a shrimp keeper, I suppose. So that brings us to the end of this week's video. We hope you found it useful and informative. If you have any questions, please hit the comments below and likewise hit the like button. Until next time, thanks for watching.